what's going on everyone, it's Chris and welcome back to once again another episode of Anomalist. And uh, unfortunately, it, uh, as far as we know, this is uh, a, the chapter, the funeral, at which the grandmother has passed away, or I guess the mother, or her grandmother, I don't know, I didn't remember what, what's the happened. Just got back from the co-op. Tuesdays are pretty much my favorite day of the week now. Today, Monica showed me some brush techniques for blending my tones more evenly. She really is amazing. I can't believe how much she can get done in a week. I'm not sure I could keep up that pace even if I could do nothing but paint every day. Going in is always a little bittersweet, though. I can't help but think about how great it would be to go two or maybe even three days a week. But it means a lot that Dan's giving up his time to help me out with this. I know he's trying as hard as he can. He's trying. Okay, so... Oh, wow, only two memories. Okay. Let's see. Uh, so yeah, when we left off, we kind of screwed over to the dad twice. But, um... I'm hoping this time around... We will we will make sure we get it right, you know. We I, I think I think we'll help him out soon. You now get get his life back together. And uh, hmm, guess this would be the last place that it should be. Yeah, she is. Oh, that's the <laughs> yeah. The, uh, oh, I can't read the letter. Okay, so that is. I'm assuming we're finding out about yeah because there's the phone okay so then that's probably when she found out that her is it the grandmother hold on a second it's Linda's grandmother okay because I, I, I think grandmother I'm like is it the grandmother of the kid and that would be Linda's mother uh, okay so we can exit the memory then We need to keep it together for Tommy. You know what's so weird there, though? Is that we oh, don't... Yeah. Um... Good. Switch the house for more clues. Oh, yes, I forgot about that part. Hey, okay. Tommy, having fun? You bet. That's one of the three for Tommy. Alright, let's, let's read your thoughts. Take Tommy to see the new James Bond. Possess. Wait, no. Can I can I read your mind? There you go. Oh. Lord, I'm so sorry. Tell me what I can do. Okay. Let's see. Oh no. <laughs> It's a fun exploration, that's for sure. Like, you, you get this... Like, it's cool, because you, you get to kind of map out their lives, but it's a fun puzzle game as well, because you're trying to put all the pieces together. Oh, it's, oh, it's, it's a very easy, like, point-and-click type of adventure, but that's okay. What up with you? Should I have run the ad? I don't know if it would have helped the book, but I still spent all day kicking myself. Did I cop out? Is there some other reason why I didn't want to put the book out there yet? How am I supposed to believe I'm doing something that matters if I'm scared to tell the world about it? Damn it. Way to build your confidence, Dan. Oh. Sorry. So we have to find, we probably have to look for like books too or letters. Yeah, I, I've realized with this game, too, that teleporting the lights is fun, but it's not... I don't know if it's really, like, necessary to go quick or anything like that. Except if I have to get from, like, the first floor or second floor really quickly, either. Um, okay. Is there are no other memories here? We 
I had to probably find like a letter, right? A book of some kind. Shit's eerie as hell, though. <laughs> I like the like the sounds in the background. I don't. I can't. I can't find anything right now. Two out of the three memories found. So there is a fourth memory somewhere here. I've probably walked by it so many times already. Oh yeah, I forgot that you could check outside too. Wait a minute. Oh, that's a light. It's like why was it glowing? Just be here for me. Oh, those are two memories. Oh, Jesus Christ. My, my bad. Okay. Okay, so now he's just chilling there. What's this? Oh, Paul, first thing tomorrow morning. Any possible way to move it? Is, the, is this thing announced yet? So that's his thing. Anne, I just got off the phone with Mom. She told me about Grandma Joe. I know we expected it sooner rather than later, but this is hitting me so much harder than when Granddad died last year. Do you remember going to Grandma Joe's house after school on Wednesdays and playing until Mom got off work? How Grandma Joe always had a surprise for us? Even if it was just cookies in the oven, she'd always time it so the whole house would smell like them when we got there. I hope the minister captures those little moments because they don't seem as little now. I wish the circumstances were different, but it will still be good to see you at the funeral. What am I saying? You probably won't even get this until after the funeral. I guess I just needed to write anyway. Love, Linda. Mark the 21st of this month on your calendars for one day only. Watch the world famous Fighter 5 as they scream across the sky. Witness death defying feats of, of flying in a display unlike anything you've ever seen. Guaranteed to blow you away. Don't miss it. Okay. That is extremely sad. Alright. Tommy, what you got? Is she in heaven? I'm sure she is, honey. Uh, voice acting got better. <laughs> we'll say that. Um, a little better. A little better. Could be still, still, still lacking, lacking in strength, I think. Uh, and he was three. He keeps on drawing him sad. Alright, hold on. I, what I need is... Let's collect some more clues here. Because there's... Well, first of all, let's go back for a second. Because there's one right here. I walked out to the bluff to remember Grandma Joe and say goodbye. And on the way back, I started thinking about what it really means to have a family. To make that your focus. 
She seemed to take such joy in being surrounded by her family, providing for them, taking care of them. I hope I never took that for granted. When I got back to the house, a question hit me that I can't get out of my head. What will Tommy think about Dan and me when he gets older? And what if Tommy has kids of his own? I can't even begin to think of myself as a grandmother. I haven't even been a mother for that long and I'm still feeling my way through what it means to be a good one. At least I'll always have an example. I miss you, Grandma Jo, and I'll never forget you. I promise. <laughs> yeah, you hear just Tommy in the background with his rockets. Ah, uh, okay. So the magazine says they're going to be tons of planes. He needs to call and buy a ticket if he's going to the funeral. Hi, Mom. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Hi, Mom. Um, hmm. Well, here's Dan over here. Most of you here knew my grandmother. For those who didn't, I truly wish you had. She was an example for all of us. Her warmth, her caring, and her smile were impossible to forget. It's still hard for me to believe she's gone. Without her, the world is... Um, I still need to, I think I still need a clue for Dan. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, no. Joe's funeral's the same day as the signing in Eugene, and Paul says they can't move it. He'll understand if I bail because he knows Linda, but Crowfield is a different story. They won't give a damn why I missed it. They'll just get a memo and put it in a spreadsheet somewhere and write me off just a little bit more. And it's not just the timing. If I do the reading, I've got to get that chapter in shape. It's not even remotely ready for anyone to see it. Can't worry about what Paul says. He's my agent. He's supposed to stroke me. And what about Tommy? God, this family. Nothing is, is working out. Uh, well, I will say this. Oh my god, everyone's so sad in this family. Nothing, nothing I pick is going to, <laughs> is going to be happy. Uh, <laughs> oh my god. Because hey, Tom, even this? Tommy, who's That's gotten cool. everything thus far, is getting sad. Linda is, de is like sad now because her, her grandmother's dead. It's fucking... <sighs> Ugh. Oh, is this like the grandmother going up in the rocket? That that that's my interpretation. <sighs> so there's your chapter. Mm. I have not helped Dan at all. Yeah, with his book and his career. And as far as I know, he's the one bringing the income in with his, to the family. So, we kind of need him, right? And now Linda, though, will also need plane tickets to go see the grandmother in the funeral. So, I guess go fuck, go fuck yourself, Tommy, right? Because <laughs> hey, what, what's his thing? What? Wait. Wait, one second. The magazine says they're gonna be tons of planes. Well, okay, so Tommy got everything that he wanted. He could skip the planes, alright? Okay, so what I'm gonna do... Is that I'm gonna make Dan the top priority here. Complete the first chapter in his book. Let's choose Dan and Doc. 
now in late night we'll get her her tickets. Okay. Right, we'll, re we'll read the clues in a second here, but let's let's just get this out of the way. So let's get to the phone. Sorry, Tommy, but... You've got everything else this far. Um... Like, he got his camp. He got his board game time. Someone died in the family. They need to, to, to take the top priority for now. From the desk of Harold Baxter, January 22nd, 1948. A final entry before I depart. The bank would no doubt prevent me from purchasing the house due to the inherent conflict of interest. But given its history of frequent ownership changes, I feel confident that the mortgage department will be glad to have the property off their hands. I believe I could set up a trust, or perhaps a shell company, and convince Mr. Lowry that we must part with the property for less than market value. I feel certain that I can appeal to his conservative nature. I believe it will prove to be a sure... A sure investment as a rental property and I think I now understand why people do not stay for extended periods. I find myself unable to describe the feeling precisely but in my time here I have found my mind drifting as strange ways as if it was n not always my own. But the natural beauty is undeniable. Perhaps shorter visits are wiser use of, of the property. Yes, I believe that is a fine idea indeed. I will say this um I guess part of the game will be like discovering who I am as a spirit, like wh who I used to be. Because clearly, by the indication of when this when this took place, I would say it would be the f when the uh, when the writing of this took place it was the forties. So I had to be someone that died like a long time ago. That was still haunting. Because according to his books, it was like like quite a few people. Uh, have uh well I was gonna say um there's quite a few people that have rented out the house or have bought the house and then left so you know I don't, I don't know this is the diary of Claire Bradford September 4th 1961 we're here so why don't I feel more excited this was supposed to be fun just Roger and me Mom and Dad think we're, we're here with Ben and Lori, but of course that was just a trick. Nope, just Roger and me in this big house by the ocean for the whole week. I'm... The whole week. I'm sad to see that there's no piano here, but I suppose a week without practice won't do me too much harm. I guess maybe being alone with Roger that long is what's making me feel nervous, though. Why should that be? He's my fiancé, after all. If I... If I'm supposed to spend the rest of my life with him, I shouldn't be worried about spending the week with him, should I? Everyone has second thoughts before they get married, right? I mean, sure. You have to decide if you want to spend the rest of your life with them. That's kind of what... Uh, that's why I think marriage is. You know, you kind of make that decision. Obviously, people take back that decision later on. But, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't. All right. Uh, I don't know how many, how much more, how many more books there are. We have the phone here. Probably could have selected that phone. There's the magazine that I would decide not to give Tommy. Yeah, I think I think we're good. I don't, I don't know. I don't think I saw anything else when I was walking around, which I'll I'll take. So who's Claire now? So Claire, I guess, is a is a rent rent to the house down the line, nineteen sixty one. I guess. All right. Let's whisper. It's creepy as hell. It freaks me out. Gives me chills every time. Jesus Christ. 
Dan knew his books had drifted almost completely out of the public eye. He couldn't turn down the chance to get his work back into the literary spotlight. He drove to Eugene on the 21st and was surprised to see a line out, out the door of Bracket Books. Paul had delivered. Dan wasn't completely happy with the chapter he read, but the crowd certainly seemed to like it. He left Eugene with a confidence boost that carried him for days. Good, good, good. What about her? He knew he couldn't ignore Grandma just passing completely, though, so he flew into Denver that night before the funeral and attended the visitation. He was on the ground for less than 12 hours before having to fly back, and Linda was hurt that he didn't go to the service as well, but she knew he was trying to make the best of a difficult situation. That's what matters. And as for poor Tommy... When Dan told Tommy that they wouldn't be able to go to the show, Tommy had a crying fit and tried to tear up the magazine. He worried his parents. He hasn't thrown a fit like that for almost a, y a year. This is exactly the t kind of thing they hope to avoid by spending the summer in such a quiet, peaceful place. But you can't help circumstances. You can't help someone dying. And that's how the Kaplan's first month of the house on the cliff came to an end. Yeah, what a... What a boring <laughs> month, right? <laughs> Dan sent what he had so far to Paul. It went badly. Dan knew the work wasn't very good, and Paul echoed that judgment. He promised to keep the news from Gofield for the time being, but told Dan that without a major improvement in quality, the book might not be pu pu publishable. The next day, Dan made good on a promise to take Tommy into the woods and look for Arrowhead, so they drove to the site of a Seosla settlement and got to work. Dan and Tommy had fun digging around in the dirt, getting messy and looking for artifacts. They found a handful of arrowheads, which Tommy proudly showed his mother when they got home. A few nights later, Dan and Linda got a babysitter and drove into town for a date. They spent more than, than they should have on a bottle of wine and had such a good time that they didn't even notice everyone else leaving. When they finally realized they were the last ones at the restaurant, they apologized and left after giving their waitress a generous tip. They still had two more months of the coast, and their story was just beginning. All right, yeah, fun times, yeah. <laughs> Full house. A friend of Dan's was coming to visit. <laughs> All right. Well, doesn't seem like anything has changed. Was much. Actually, you know, it looks much more colorful than it did the first time. Or maybe I've been... Well, maybe that's just... Maybe that's just me. It just seems like that. Oh. Dan better keep his mouth shut. But what? Let's see. I'm checking to see if this is a folder. I thought Tommy was sleeping with us. Nothing in the kitchen, right? Okay. So they're preparing for a visit from Dan's good friend. What up? Going to the funeral alone was hard. There's a part of me that understands why Dan couldn't come. But I don't think I'll ever get over him not being there. What would Grandma Jo have thought? She probably would have had the perfect advice, something like what she used to say about living a balanced life, not just a balanced week. Dan coming to the visitation did at least make it a little more bearable. I have to give him that. He tried, and yet, again, it's like it's one of those things where you kind of have to understand the circumstances. His book is tanking. <laughs> it's bad right now. Um, but we'll see what happens. Maybe, maybe we'll be able to help him out with that. Oh, what's this? Honey, I'm sorry it's been so long since my last letter, but we've all been over the 
the place. Have you gotten settled into the big house yet? I hope getting away from everything has help has been a help for you and Dan. I'm right because speaking of getting away, your father and I are going to take a road trip. I found some good AARP deals and with your father only working part time, it wasn't very hard to arrange time off. It's been too long since our last trip. I've always enjoyed changes of scenery and as you're, you're hopefully learning, it can be just the thing a marriage needs. Lord knows it's helped us. The trip will take us close enough to the sh to the shore to come visit. I'm sorry to say, and if you if you write back, we'll be gone before your letter arrives. We'll call it oh, we'll call if one of our motels has long distance. Uh, but if we don't get a ch chance to call, I'll send my love to Dan and Thomas. You know your father and I want the best for you all. Love, Mom. Right, so that's one clue. Hey, dummy boy. How you doing? It's our secret. Oh. Going to the candy store? Let's see. Oh. Can Davy sleep over? Let me call his mom. He's still getting sad. Fucking vroom, oh, damn. Vroom. Um let's see. I feel like this game would be very interesting if uh I had to go into stealth mode. But I, I just didn't think I was worried about what they meant by stealth mode, but now I get it. Oh what what maybe we should talk to father? Dan. Oh, Dan. Danny. Still can't believe how many people showed up at the reading. Maybe I haven't faded into obscurity just yet. But forget about the publicity. That's fleeting. Won't matter in the end. The best thing was having a deadline and hammering on that chapter. I think I finally evened out the voice. And I think Scott's backstory is finally settled. Never underestimate the motivational power of potential public humiliation. It seems like we're gonna have another difficult choice here. They're all difficult choices. I want this family to be happy. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> like just, 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 you know, my emotions. In here. What about Tommy? You can sleep with us. All right. <sighs> okay. Oh. So. All right. So now we just kind of look around some more. See if there's any more clues to work with. Yes. Guy, probably not expecting to hear from me, were you? You know I'm. All about surprises. Look, we're gonna head up to the coast next weekend. We're gonna, we're doing the drive from L.A. to Seattle. I don't know why my accent's like this. It's certainly not a Seattle or Los Angeles accent, but who cares? I have an interview up there on Tuesday, and Kelly has a has a friend who's gonna introduce her to some casting people from Vancouver. Can we crash at your place on the way up? We should be pulling through next Friday. I was thinking we could use it as an excuse to jam on our books. I want to see your new stuff, and I have a draft I want you to take a look at. I'm way beyond knowing what's good or not with my work, so I could really use your advice. And you know I'll give give it to you straight about your new book. Is there a child yet? Could be an impromptu writer's workshop, I guess. Anyways, I think it'll be fun. Let me know. T. Mr. T. Mr. T. Ta. Um, oh, fuck, well, I forgot what I was going to say now. Um, yeah, yeah, that, uh, I don't know why he started out with GA. Like, you know, there's dude, there's bro, but GA. It's weird. Oh. Check sofa. Call chamber of conference. Hotel in, t in town. Double check T plus K trip when Dan gets back. Okay, what's in the slots? 
Watch that ugly sweater. Mom and Dad gave that so they could see me wearing it. Is that is that really important <laughs> at all? It probably is. I'm just not. Oh, there's your friend. We could work something out. Um, oh God, excuse me. <laughs> I took Tynan up on the book jam. He hasn't seen a word of my new book, and fresh eyes are priceless. He bailed me out. Tynan. I hope he understands how much of that book worked because of him. I still remember when we were walking to the pond, and he had the idea about using newspaper clips and police reports. Of course, no matter how many times I tell interviewers it was his idea, they just keep giving me the credit. Maybe they just want the tidy auteur version. Oh well, can't change that. Let's just hope he has an idea for this one too. Freddy can't get here soon enough. Alright, so, hi Dan. Check those fishing poles. Maybe we we could find a pond. Good news. Mom called today with a change of plans. They made better time on the first leg of the trip than they expected, and they're coming to visit. Bad news. They want to come this weekend. Did Dan tell Tynan they could stay here for sure, or is that still up in the air? I'll ask after dinner. She sounded cheerful enough on the phone, though I can't help wondering if they took this trip because they hit another rough patch. Hope not. I hope they just want to see Tommy and have a classic Mears family feast. Though, maybe seeing how they've ended up will be good perspective for Dan and me. Speaking of which, Dad better not get nosy. I've told him a million times that my marriage is not his business. Maybe I'll try the thing Christine told me. When someone asks you something private, just say, why do you ask? Put it back on them and see if they've actually got a reason to get into your business. Yeah, I've got to remember to try that. We'll see how he answers that one. Oh. Okay, so now it makes it sound like we're going to have to end up picking... Uh, the, oh, wow, look at all these photos. Okay. Um, we're going to end up picking who comes over or not. Uh, with that being said, I think I'm going to end it off here. I don't know how long into the episode I am. Might not be that far in but we're gonna move on to the next episode uh and uh we'll see what happens we'll see if we can figure out who should be coming over or not but anyways guys thank you so much for watching i hope you all enjoyed and i'll see you guys next time Bye bye